How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Boilai Hobby Time. While browsing the frame section at the store the other day, I saw this large shadow box. Its purpose is to display clothing like jerseys or pants that are special to you, or that somebody has been wearing while they accomplished something incredible, like winning that pickleball tournament at their local rec center. I personally don't have any clothes that special, but the frame was half off, and I knew I could find something fun to do with it. The first step in creating this project was to measure out the space that I had to work with. I'm going to be building it on the backing that came with the frame, but I double checked the measurements of the interior of the box just to ensure everything would fit later on. I took those newfound measurements and I transferred them to some pink XPS insulation foam. I used a straight edge and a nice sharp utility knife to get some clean cuts on the foam. The foam that I had was just a little too short, so I threw a little bit extra on the end. The back piece that came with the shadow box had a thin layer of foam of its own that made my foam ever so slightly too thick to fit without bumping the glass. I have no way of evenly shaving a layer like that off of my foam, so the styrofoam layer had to go. Which is alright, because it would have been hard to stick the pink foam to the black fabric anyways. After creating my large foamy mess, I cleaned up my large foamy mess and I glued down my new pink foam in place of the old white styrofoam using some foam safe super glue. This build is a part of a monthly art challenge that I do alongside my patrons. The theme that they voted on for this month was natural wonders. The first one that came to my mind was Grand Prismatic Spring from Yellowstone. I recreated a smaller Yellowstone hot spring a while back, but this one is way bigger. I believe it is the third largest in the world. As always, make sure you have good ventilation and a respirator while melting foam. I used a combination of hot wire and utility knife to carve out the shape of the spring, and I started with the deepest part at the center of the pool. I then shaved the sides of the pool down towards the center, and I made sure to follow the shoreline that I had sketched earlier. After the shaping had been done, I used a butane torch to even out the slope, hide the cut lines, and give it a little bit more of a natural look. I then glued the foam down to the backing, and it was time to apply a terrain paste. I knew I was going to be doing some smearing by hand, so I threw on some gloves. The terrain paste creates a protective shell over the foam, like the protective shell that goes over soft serve. In addition to water, I added some Mod Podge to give the shell a little bit more flexibility and durability. I also added a little bit of paint at the very end to make it look more delicious. After scraping all of the batter from the mixing pot, it was time to spread it out. I started with a brush and then I moved to my hand. Then I went to a palette knife, and then I went back to my gloved hand. There's a certain point in the drying process where you can use some isopropyl alcohol to smooth the surface and remove the brush strokes. It doesn't last very long, so you kind of have to work quickly. After that was dry, I threw on an unnecessary additional protective layer of Mod Podge and paint. The goal was to create a watertight seal for when I added the resin later on. Unfortunately, it didn't save me from a disaster that ended up ruining this project. We'll get to that in a bit. When that layer of Mod Podge and paint had dried, it was time to start painting. And while I'm painting, I'd like to take a moment to thank all of my patrons. You guys are the best.
After the painting was done, I sealed it with one final layer of Mod Podge to protect it from the resin, which actually backfired on me, and you'll see why in a minute. I let the Mod Podge cure for 24 hours, and during that time, I touched up a few details around the pool and added some contrast by making a few spots lighter and a few darker. Then it was time to pour. This was the resin that I had on hand. It's made for deep pours, and this one is exactly two inches in the center. I probably should not have risked it after my last mishap with this same resin. In that video, I said I was done using resin, but that was a joke. This time around, I'm really done. And I mean that as another joke. After the resin was set in place, I put a cover over the top to protect it from dust, and I left it to cure. And while it cures, please enjoy this collection of the projects sent in by my patrons for the Natural Wonders Art Challenge. Thanks again to all the patrons who participated in last month's art challenge. Unfortunately, I came back to a little disaster. While curing, it must have heated up too much and pulled the Mod Podge layer away from the bottom of the pool, causing it to become pale and chipped where it should have been the deepest, darkest blue. At this point, I was pretty bummed, but luckily, I had a second one lying around. It looks like whoever made this one used the right type of resin. I finished up the project with some textured mud around the surface of the pool. After that, I called it good. One last thing before the glamour shots. I just started a second channel. I will begin by uploading alternate edits of some of my projects without voiceover or music, and I'll eventually start adding original content specifically for that channel. The channel is called Hobby Time Creations, and it would mean a lot to me if you went and subscribed. That is it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Huge shout out as always to my patrons. You guys are the best. Have an awesome week, everyone. I'll see you next time.